Hello everyone. Welcome to the solution to the problems of cost benefit analysis concepts and practice by Boardman, Greenberg, Vining and Weimer, chapter 9. The team is Suvranil and Adam. In the first problem, we have been asked to understand the net benefits a temporary bridge would accrue. So, it, the project life is expected to be 3 years and the benefits would be accrued in year 1 estimated around 275,000, year 2 around 295,000 and on year 3 around 315,000. The cost of the project is estimated to be $730,000 initial cost and uh, a uh, net cost of $81,000 in three years. So the present value of the cost would turn out to be around 802,009. Now their benefits can accrue in four different ways. All the benefit can accrue at the end of the year. Then the net benefit would be $15,192. If the benefits accrue at the beginning of the year, then the net benefits are around $47,880. If the benefits accrue mid-year each year, then the net benefit is around $31,376,000. And if the benefits split equally between the beginning and end of the year, the net benefits would be $31,536. So overall, based on any of these circumstances we can say with certainty that the project have a positive net benefit and we should construct the temporary bridge in the second problem a government data processing center wants to understand the net benefits of replacing the furniture to alleviate employee health concerns and improve productivity the office furniture costs around $430,000 and would have a useful life of 5 years, after which it can be sold at 10% of its initial cost. The new furniture would save $68,000 in medical cost each year and $18,000 in employee comfort. At 9% discount rate and 3% inflation, the net benefits for the furniture replacement would be a negative $12,406. However, if the medical cost saw an inflation of 6%, the net benefit would be a positive 4813 and the center should move forward with the furniture replacement. In the third problem, we need to compare the net benefits from a basketball court and swimming pool. The key point to note here is that the expected life of the basketball court is 8 years while that of the swimming pool is 24 years. We cannot compare the net benefits from an 8 year project to a 24 year project. There are two ways to make this comparison. The basketball court generates $78,529 in net benefits in 8 years which if the project were to have a 24 year life expectancy would generate 167,655 while the swimming pool generates $95,769 in net benefits in the same 24 year period. So the basketball court generates higher net revenue in this respect. The second alternative is to annualize the net benefits. The annualized net benefits for basketball court is $12,150 while that for the swimming pool is $6,940 and again the basketball court turns out to be the better investment for the town. In the next problem, EPA would like to preserve a piece of land as a wilderness area for 20 years. The land costs $1.1 million. EPA estimates the annual benefits to be $110,000. At 4% discount rate, the net benefit of the project would be $394,936. However, if the benefit grow by 4% per year, the real discount rate would be approximately 1.96% and the net benefit would increase to $670,082. Therefore, under both estimates, EPA should move forward with the project as both of them provides positive net benefit. 
In the next problem, we are still continuing with the previous problems cost benefit analysis. If instead of a 20 year lease, the land were to be purchased as a permanent wildlife refuge, the benefit stream can now be viewed as a perpetuity. If benefit remains constant, the net benefit would be then $750,000. If the benefit, however, grows at 2% annually, the net benefit would soar to $3.5 million. Both options provide a positive net benefit and hence the land should be purchased. New City is considering building a recreation center. Estimated construction cost is $12 million with annual staffing and maintenance cost of $750,000 over the 20-year life of the project. At the end of the life of the project, New City expects to be able to sell the land for $4 million. Analysts estimate the first year benefits accruing at the end of the year to be $1.2 million and expect it to grow 4%. Analysts estimate the real discount rate for the project to be 6%. Under these circumstances, the project would have a net benefit of $347,375. Analysts typically forecast different parameters that go into a cost-benefit analysis. In this cost-benefit analysis, the growth rate of benefit is estimated to lie between 1% and 6%, which can make the net benefits range from a negative approximately 4.5 million to a positive 3.3 million. The discount rate is expected to be within 5% to 7% range, which can generate a net benefit of approximately negative 1.5 million to approximately 1.1 million. The scrap value of the project is expected to be between 2 million and 5 million, which would result net benefits to range approximately between negative 36,000 to a negative 971,000. So we saw that there are different parameters that can affect the expected net benefits of a project. The best case scenario would yield a net benefit of approximately 5.6 million under 6% growth rate, 5% discount rate and $5 million in scrap value. While the conservative estimate of the project under 1% growth rate 7% discount rate and 2 million scrap value would yield a net benefit of negative 5.7 million in net benefits. That concludes chapter 9. We will be back soon with a new chapter. Thank you.